Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Tibet with Travel China Tibet. And today we are driving from Lhasa to Yamdrak Lake, which is a high elevation. It's a sacred lake in Tibet. And so we're gonna walk around the lake, we're gonna tour the lake, and then we'll be going to a village that's right near or surrounding the lake. We're gonna meet up with a host uh, who is going to cook us and prepare for us the local traditional Tibetan food of Yamdrak Lake. I'm very excited to learn about it, to learn about the culture and to see the, just the magnificence of the lake and of Tibet. And we are on our way. And the scenery even within Lhasa and surrounding Lhasa is breathtaking, but I'm excited to get out of the city for the first time into the countryside of Tibet. Just, yeah, I mean the views, the mountains, I know we're gonna do a lot of switchbacks weaving around the mountain passes. Uh, it's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah, too bad it's raining. Not too hard, drizzling, but it is cloudy today. Hopefully it will clear up, but we've just stopped at a viewpoint to overlook the Brahmaputra River, which is one of the most important rivers. It is massive, and it kind of just fills this entire, like, plain. Um, just like multiple channels of the river. Look how huge it is. On the rocks now you can see tons of painted ladders or staircases and that's a Bon religious symbol of good luck or going higher. Oh man, those switchbacks are pretty intense. But we are winding our way up to a mountain pass that's at 4,700 meters, but stopping here for a view of the valley. Man, it is stunningly gorgeous. Just in the clouds, the mountains surrounding, and there's a, a bit of a traffic jam here. You, they have this platform that you can walk out, but a lot of locals come here with their mastiffs, Tibetan mastiffs, they're beautiful dogs as well as huge, like, fully decorated yaks. But they do things like put sunglasses on the mastiffs as well. And here is the final viewpoint. The monument and then overlooking the, the entire, like, river valley and villages below. And additionally, it's kind of a pit stop too. You can there's some street food stalls set up. Uh, you can get drinks. You can have a cup of tea. You can get noodles, and they're also doing some uh, fried potatoes or French fries, Tibetan French fries. <laughs> I don't know what that seasoning. I think it's that like Tibetan herb or something. Um, and then she she kind of like um, mixes them around in the plastic bag. They smell so good. Nothing sounds better at this elevation in this in this like thin air. And I'm also ordering some noodles. Oh yeah, that's just full of seasoning. Mm. And hot and fresh olive oil. Mm. Oh, that's tasty. Okay, so it's yak bone. Uh, there's noodles she adds in some chili, and that broth looks amazing with the yak bones and some Sichuan pepper in there. It's just like really simple noodles, but it tastes so good, I think, because of this elevation, because of this cool weather, and because it's hot. I think that's the reason why it tastes so good. 
That was a great necessary stop. I didn't realize how hungry I was going around those switchbacks. Uh, we're back on the road now and we are on our way to the mountain pass to the sky. We just arrived at the mountain pass at the view over Yamdrak Lake. It is unbelievably stunning. You don't want to walk too fast, feel a little bit dizzy. Oh, wow, the views of the lake are just unbelievable. Wow. That view of the lake and that color of the lake, it's just, it's otherworldly. And you really, you can really feel that you are on the rooftop of the world here. We are on the rooftop of the world here. Out of the blood a oh yeah bit. <laughs> yeah do not walk too fast yeah I feel, I feel like a little I dizzy as well on the light side. <laughs> slightly tipsy yeah. very tipsy we're driving now down to the bottom of the lake to the lake uh, then we'll be driving along the lake we'll get another view of the lake and that's where the village is somewhere along the lake as well, where we're gonna cook the local Yamdrak Tibetan food. And we are stopping at the bottom of the lake now. A little hike down to the water's edge. Lots more Tibetan mastiffs, and there might be some, oh yeah, there's actually yaks. You can take a photo in the water, riding a yak, and man, it's the colors, the, the lake is just stunning. It's breathtaking. The color, the, I think the peacefulness of the water and just the calmness, the glassiness of the, and the crystal clarity of the water. Getting my first feel of the water. It's cold, but it's not that cold, but it's just crystal clear. And yeah, this is uh, one of four of the most sacred, of the most holy lakes in Tibet. And there's something so magical so peaceful so calming about it it is unbelievably spectacular this place is special wow with the tibetan mastiffs he's like a lion all oh, that breath oh, oh they are beautiful okay i'm gonna sit you can sit here okay ah okay okay oh man and their manes, their manes, oh, they're so warm. Oh, they're so warm, the, their manes and their... Hey, guy. Okay. Their manes, they're like lions. Okay. <laughs> okay. The fully Tibetan. Can you put them between your... It's okay? Like this? Wow. These are gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous, gorgeous dogs. Look. Oh man. And you can just feel the warmth coming out of their fur, out of their bodies. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, my beautiful friend. Goodbye, my beautiful friend. Goodbye, my beautiful friend. Oh man, that was spectacular. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, it's starting to rain. We gotta move. Man, that weather just rolls in so fast. And it was like warm and now it's getting cold again. Okay, that was just a five minute drive from where we were before. It's still raining, but this is a village literally right on the banks of Yamdrak Lake. A beautiful Tibetan village. And what you notice immediately is all the dried, I believe, I mean, mostly yak, but maybe cow, and also cow mix yak dung, uh, which is often the fuel in these areas because there's not much wood. And enter into the house, the courtyard area. Very cool. And then we gotta go up a flight of stairs. Maybe the house is elevated. Hello. Wow, very nice. Wow. Amazing. Step up here and it's like a whole nother world, a little courtyard, family courtyard, living areas. Wow, it's beautiful. The Tibetan style and design is just, it's just gorgeous. 
they dig they dig village and she's Dicky. Dicky. very nice to meet you thank you thank you so much for having us yes thank you man this place is absolutely beautiful and this is the indoor living room the coziness of these tibetan houses and homes and it's all like sheep wool yak wool blankets and pillows with huge tibetan cabinets the colors the designs is it butter tea? she serves uh, sweet tea oh, okay <laughs> these are some of the best like seating sections of anywhere ever Oh, that's a milk tea and you can taste the milkiness of that. We're going to do the cooking in here? Uh, she, uh, first, uh, she's going to ready the butter tea. Oh, can I see that? Yeah, yeah. You are welcomed with sweet tea, but this, this is the real Tibetan butter tea. This is the power tea. This is the good stuff. Uh, but she, yeah, she takes some of the yak butter, puts it into that. Now she uses a blender before they kind of like churned it um, with tea, with hot water, with salt. I love it. That's yak butter. <laughs> Okay, so first dish that she's gonna make is a, uh, it's a sampa noodle. So barley, roasted barley noodle with yak meat. And what's the name of the dish again? Zamtuk. 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 Zamtuk, okay. Oh, yak meat goes in. Okay, then on the other side of the kitchen while the yak meat is boiling, she's also making another thing which is a type of momo, but it's, it's like a bread, not a dumpling momo. Um, and so that's flour and she mixes it with the, it's like the juice that forms on the top of yogurt, so it should be a bit sour. And mixes that with some salt, and that's going to be a yeah another Tibetan bread. And then another dish that she's making is a a yak soup. Maybe some bones boiled in there, but she already had that going. That's already boiling away. And then she just put in a bunch of sliced radish. Now radish is one of the only vegetables that's grown in such a high elevation here in Tibetan food and so radish is very common uh, but yeah I mean typical traditional Tibetan food does not really include vegetables at all because it's just it's just so high in elevation but radish radish is available it grows and then some big spring onions I guess they grow at this elevation too and that's gonna boil away that looks really hearty really good um. <laughs> And that is the Nerto Sugu. Oh, so keeps you me. At the last soon, and a mother like you, she may go to. They are she, mamma. Oh, for that bread, what she does is she makes them into that dough, she makes them into cone shapes and then kind of hollows it out so it's like a hollow cone of dough. Barley. We jump back over to the yak that she pulled put into the hot water boiled. She boiled that down, rendered out the fat and the juices. And now it's like a very simple, unique type of noodle where she takes the sampa, which is the roasted barley flour, and just sprinkles that into the boiling soup. So those are like little dough ball noodles. And then even the entire soup just kind of turns like a slightly reddish brown color from that sampa. And next she just added in some radish to that soup noodle yak. Okay, so for that bread, uh, she heated up some oil in like a cast iron kind of skillet. Then put them in with that cone shape down and he's gonna fry those off. And I think they're gonna be cooked a number of different ways. First fried off like that, and then I think steamed. That is a unique bread though. Black tea. Mm -hmm. She 
bread even gets more interesting. This is a step I didn't even know was gonna happen. Uh, but she got some, she poured in some hot water, some salt, I believe, and then some black tea, condensed black tea, and then puts that into the fry bread with the oil, and that just smokes up. Um, and so that's, and then put the cover on, that's gonna steam now and fry all at the same time. What a move. All that bread as it's simmering away and steaming and bubbling, it just smells so good now. That essence of the tea, you can smell it and the bread is starting to like puff up a bit too. And those breads, they are ready right out of the pan, still sizzling and it has that like brown crunchy crust on the bottom, but then it's like steamed on the top. It smells so good and they almost look like biscuity. And then the final dish that is is the, the sampa soup noodle with yak, and she's giving me a quick taste test. Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. It's kind of sticky, gooey because it's kind of yeah, it's kind of floury because it's like they're like dumplings. Mm. And with the yak meat flavor and the radish in there, that's delicious. Now I think all the food is ready. It's being dished out by having some butter tea before we get started. Yes, that is the power tea. That is the tea. You can just feel the immediately your lips glossy, the butter, mm, the saltiness. That is. That's what you need at this elevation. Thank you. Fresh cheese. Yes. Wow. And along with everything else, there's also a fresh cheese. She went into the other room, kind of the storeroom, and reached out of the bucket for this fresh cheese. And they traditionally eat it with sugar. They mix it with sugar, so it's sweet. Mmm. Sweet and sour. Wow, that is like cottage cheese. That is juicy. All the food is ready. Um, oh man, this is ultimate warm, heartwarming food. And since it's already dished out, I'm gonna start with that that I tasted in the kitchen right now. It's the sampa, the roasted barley. It is kind of like a porridge, but the little dumpling noodles in there with the radish with the, the yak meat that she boiled down. Okay, so the correct way to eat this is to just pick it up and you can just drink it and... And you're supposed to slurp as well, but that is chunky. Mm. The radish, like it just melts in your mouth. I got a piece of yak fat in that bite. And then the dumplings, or the noodles, which is the sampa, which is roasted barley. They're formed into little like noodle dumplings, but at the same time that starch has kind of dissolved into the liquid so it's thick. That is, that's what you want to be eating at 4,700 meters. Mm. Okay, next I'll try some of this bread and immediately you pick it up. It feels, it's, yeah, it's heavy, but it's like spongy on the top and then really crispy hard on the bottom because of the way she seared it and steamed it at the same time. Break it in half first, the different textures of it, yeah. Two totally, or even three different totally textures. And so you can take a bite of the bread. All that bread. All that bread is stunning. The fluffy gooiness of it. And then that crispy crunch on the bottom. And that like salty tea flavor. Like caramelized tea flavor. And then you can chase it with some of the that porridge. Wow. That bread is amazing. There's some serious yak fat in that porridge. But you need it. You need the fat, you need the yak, you need the, the dough, the carbohydrates. That's what you, you survive on here and that's what is essential to the diet. Okay, I finished my, that uh, sampa with yak and now it's time to move on to the, the soup with the radish and yak. And I, I really love radish, especially when it's cooked down and it kind of like melts in your mouth. These are big, thick slices. Mm. Mm. Radish is amazing. 
Like it just absorbs all of that broth. That yak bone broth. It's so juicy. It's a nugget of yak meat. Oh yeah. That yak meat is actually really tender because I think she pressure cooked it. I think she cooked it for a long time. Mmm. That's really solid yak. Mmm. All of the food is simple, but this is local food. This is Tibetan food, regional Tibetan food from this region of, of the lake. And it's simple, but it's hearty. It's, it's definitely cooked with love. Ingredients from right here. This is good food, really good. Mm. Okay, and the next bowl of food is I'm gonna go for some of the fresh yogurt. And again, this is not like a after the meal yogurt. I just happened to eat it in this order, but it's part of the main meal, part of the main dish. Mm. Wow, that is good. I think it might be mixed with a little bit of sugar as well. It's a little bit sweet, nice and sour, but like milky yogurt, they kind of like milked it down, I think. And then, yeah, like the curds, it's like cheesy almost. That is definitely full fat. Very, very heavy. Yeah, like the carbs, the the animal products, they are heavy. And yeah, this might actually be one of the most high elevation meals that I've ever had. I think the, the pass where we saw the view of the lake was at 4,777 meters. I think this is at 4,000, maybe 4,400 to 4,500 or so meters. But yeah, my, my appetite is not quite what it should be at this elevation. I'm like, I'm getting full kind of fast. It could be also the amount of, of, of yak in this meal. You can have some, right? I'll just have a little bit of like, cool. Oh. It comes to a different taste. Uh -huh. It's a plain taste. Because it is like a yogurt. This is like a yogurt yeah. too, right? Got lassi to finish off the meal. Wow, yes. That is all natural, that's for sure. It's sour, mm, creamy. It's mostly sour. Yeah. Wow, I like it. Climbing up here, this is like an earthenware roof. And then there's just like yak dung, I believe, just kind of like surrounding on this wall. But up here on this little patio, whoa, the stair steps, I've got an amazing view of the lake. It's so turquoise, it's so stunningly beautiful. I can see the rooftops of this village. I can smell the dung. And you know what, because the sun is shining right now, I think maybe we'll just go quickly take a walk down to the water's edge because it's just sparkling. That turquoise color is unbelievable. Well, let's go walk down there and that will probably be the ending of this just unbelievable day in Tibet. Breathtaking scenery, breathtaking culture and people, and a local meal that was from the land. That was the real food. Wow, I'm just breathing in as much air as possible, even getting excited. <laughs> well, you get excited here, you don't want to get too excited here, or you will be out of breath. Absolutely stunning because it's sunny now, the water's sparkling, it's so unbelievably turquoise. And just on the banks the grass on the banks. This is one of those places where like, I just, it's so unbelievable, otherworldly, beautiful. And we're gonna walk back uh, to, or maybe drive to just go around the village a little bit mm -hmm. to finish this day off. <sighs> okay, so from here we are driving again, paralleling the lake 
but we're headed to this again another mountain pass that's going to be probably the highest elevation i've ever been to we're going to go through that pass oh yaks and horses and then after that we will be going to a glacier to see a glacier Oh, oh, that is windy. Oh, it's cold. We're at about 5,000 meters here. This is the highest I've ever been, but we stopped to look at a glacier. I hope this rain doesn't last too long. Oh, wow. This is otherworldly. Look at this glacier. Oh, wow, that was just a burst of rain. It can change so fast and now it's sunny. Can you hear that? pop music in the background. That's really setting the mood for nature. Now there's a rainbow. <sighs> this is unbelievable. This is the highest elevation I've been to. 5,000 meters. My eyes are burning. My... I'm slightly dizzy. I have a headache. But this is another world. Unbelievable. Shaking a little bit, but gonna make a make a circle around the stupa. Oh, it is cold, oh, and the glacier back here. Oh, wow, you can just see the streams of water just pouring out of the glacier, and then the glacier just going into the mist, into the clouds. Oh. It's just so peaceful here now. And we're now on the back side of the glacier. Uh, but Dolma actually told me that that mountain pass, we were at 5,190 meters. So that's the highest elevation I've been. And man, do you feel it in your head? You can't totally think straight, but the gorgeous scenery is breathtaking beyond belief. It's, it, we really are on the rooftop of the world. That is the truth. And I mean, if you go down from here in elevation, you get to Bangladesh, you get to India, you get to Bhutan. Um, and the, these glaciers, these mountains, these Tibet, the, the richness of Tibet is what feeds down all the, all the way to that Indian subcontinent basin, fueling this entire like continent. Um, and Tibet is, yeah, what, what a stunning place, what a stunning culture. Today has been one of the most spectacularly beautiful scenery days of my life. And then to pair that with visiting a local village at Yamdrak Lake, and that was so cool to experience the real food. I mean, it was simple food. It wasn't like packed with flavor or spices, but that was food locally from here, from this region of Yamdrak Lake. And it was, an honor and a privilege to have that experience. I want to say a massive thank you to Travel China Tibet Tours for bringing me, for organizing my trip to, for inviting me to Tibet, um, and for organizing such amazing, spectacular cultural activities. I'll have some links in the description box that you can check out, and also be sure to watch all of the videos in this Tibet series, mm -hmm. Tibetan food, mm -hmm. Tibetan culture. And I'm gonna say goodbye for right here. We're going, we're going down um, in elevation to the next village where we're gonna spend the night. I'm gonna end the video. I wanna say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now and also click the little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Tibet and see you on the next video. Wow, doing that at 5,000 meters. That was a workout. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm a little tipsy. Okay, let's let's go.